the founder and chairman of the board of the Falcon Finance Company, Anthony Falcon. On this, On this wonderful, wonderful day, day, I am, I am most, most happy, happy to dedicate, dedicate this new building. This building. I, pledge I pledge that we, that will, we will continue, continue to operate, operate under the under same, same principles, principles with which I founded this company 50 years ago. <laughs> I, Antonio Falcone, being of sound mind and body, do hereby render my last will and testament. I instruct that my entire estate and affairs, both personal and corporate, be given to Mr. Guido Falcone, my sole survivor. I instruct that my entire estate and affairs, both personal and corporate, be given to Mr. Guido Falcone, my sole surviving blood relation, now living in Monte Porzio, Italy, who never asked me for anything but a pair of American cowboy boots. Guido Falcone. <laughs> Meglio di Steve McQueen, eh? Guido, è mezz'ora che la signora aspetta la macchina. Vuoi dargli le chiavi? Mi scusi. No, mi dispiace, aspettarti. Steve McQueen.
Conosce Guido Falcone? Ask him if he knows Guido Falcone. Oh yes, now we are. Conosce per caso Guido Falcone? Guido Falcone. Conosce per caso Guido Falcone? Certo che lo conosco Guido. What do you say? What do you say? Okay, fine. Well, we'll come together. 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 Come
Veramente vai in America? Sì. Ma tornerai? Eh, non lo so. Ma no, certo che torno. Vieni da me, tesoro, vieni. Vieni. come all the way from San Francisco to see you personally. It must be pretty important business. You have become the major stockholder in a multi-billion dollar financial conglomerate. You have thousands of people working for you, depending on you. So you know you're going to need a lot of help and advice. Now, if you'll just sign this power of attorney agreement, that will transfer the business and your stock over to me. And in return, I will see that you get an income of $250,000 a year, tax-free. I had a similar agreement with your Uncle Antonio. Saved him a lot of tedious paperwork and that sort of thing. Well, me and my dictionary will read it together. Please, my friends, be happy. As you Americans say, dig in. I know that your uncle's funeral must be an emotional experience, but I got a plane to catch. You want to talk about the agreement you gave me? Yes. What did you think of it? Very long. But I finished the first page. There are 30 pages. 31 pages. Look, I know your uncle wanted you to sign it for me to take over the business. Then uh, why didn't my uncle leave you the business? I have a copy of the agreement already translated, if you want that. Oh, no, thanks, Mr. Cutler. I'm enjoying it translating. Besides, it might improve my English, don't you think? I'm sure that it will. Lacey. Yes, sir. Mr. Lacey will make all your arrangements. And I look forward to seeing you in San Francisco. Arrivederci a presto. Ciao. Ciao. Uh, Mr. Falcone, this is an open-end air ticket that you can use on any flight. Now, understand that you must arrive in San Francisco by 12 noon on the 12th day of April to sign for your money or you will lose it. Of course, you can fly whenever you want. Fly? Yes, fly. In a jet plane. <laughs> How else would you get there? Boat and a train. Yes. He says he wants to make the trip the way the old immigrants used to, like his uncle did. You know, I don't understand that. How do you go about reaching somebody like that? Are you rolling, Jimmy? Are you in focus? Well, for God's sakes, get over here on me. I'm not being paid a million bananas a year for you to shoot somebody else. No, no, let me take you back. No, 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 I insist. Okay, nice to see you. Now, there are some reporters waiting over here. Now, be very careful of what you say because they tend to misquote you, if you know what I mean. I am personally going to have you fired and you too. Get him and get him. You just say whatever. Mr. Calcone, I realize this is all extremely sudden, but I'm sure our TV viewers would like to know what your thoughts are at this moment. Well, uh, uh, I'm very happy to be in the United States of America and to see the Statue of Liberty. As America's newest financial mogul, what do you think the role of our lending institution should be? I think my company should give money to people who need it and who would work hard to pay it back. Do you really think it's all that simple? Well, yes. Well, by next Monday, you're obviously going to be the most eligible bachelor in America. I'm sure our women viewers would like to know what you look for in a wife. Well, um, in a wife? Well, a uh, big uh, heart, first of all. Um, good mother, and of course, a uh, good cook. Do you know any American right, women that's now? Enough, that's enough, that's enough. No, that's I don't enough. mind. I know you think he's square, but he really happens to be a nice guy. However, all the good intentions in the world wouldn't make him capable to run this business. I'm under a great deal of pressure, Miss Jones. 
people calling up about their loans, employees worrying about whether they're going to lose their jobs. And it's for the benefit of everybody that Guido Falcone hand over his money as quickly as possible. What's your fee? 500 a day plus expenses. Agreed. And a $25,000 bonus when you bring me the signature of Guido Falcone. Power of attorney. Do you think you can get him to do it? For that kind of money, Mr. Cutler, I can get him to do anything. Parasites. It's a wonder there aren't laws to control them. Well, getting down to business. You see, Guido, we will be arriving in San Francisco on Sunday night. I will personally check you into the presidential suite at the Stanford Court Hotel, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump from the Embarcadero Center, where, at 12 noon sharp on Monday, you will sign for your inheritance and be presented in a special ceremony to the friends and stockholders of our little family at Falcon Finance. Well, it's certainly going to be a relief, just you and me together, for the next 3,000 miles. Oh, yes, uh... Just forgot, here's a $1,000 advance. Now that amounts to uh, 830,473 lira. Yes, that's right. Uh huh. All aboard. Thank you. Now uh, I've scheduled some wonderful sightseeing for us, Guido, and I can promise you that there won't be one dull moment in the next four days. Mr. Lacey, I'm your boss now. Uh, no. Uh, yes. Good. You go to San Francisco by plane, and I'll see you there on Monday morning. But, but, but Mr. Cutler told me that... hurry. I... The train's leaving. I'll give you a hand. But I... Wait a The Grand Tetons! Big Sur! Hurry, Blue, sir! Have a nice flight! Uh, the, the port Whoa. is as high as an elephant's eye! <laughs> Tickets ready. Yeah, please. here, here's my ticket. Didn't happen to have the time, would you, sir? Uh, no, I'm sorry, I don't. You don't? Well, you are fortunate indeed, sir. I happen to have with me a fine selection of timepieces, perhaps the best ever seen in this hemisphere. Wait a moment. There's your silver, there's your gold, 17 and 15 carat. Here's your self-winding, your Swiss made, your 17 jewel. Take any one, it's $500. No, thank you. Sir, do you happen to have a deuce on you? Two dollars. Give me two dollars. Yeah, okay. Yeah, look, this week and this week only, we're running what we call the Immigrant Special. This is your Ellis Island gold watch. Wear it in good health. <laughs> of people, too. Hey! I got kids. I got five kids. There's another one on the way. Oh, yeah. All right, she's pregnant all the time.
you men are all alike. I just was just trying to... Just go away and leave me alone. I was just... I was just trying to help. You were having trouble breathing, and I thought that... I, I know what you thought. You know better than that other creep. By the way, what happened to that other guy? I'll turn him over to the conductors. Just go away and leave me alone. Yes? I'd like to apologize. You risked your neck to save mine. You didn't have to. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to talk to you. Yes, so talk. My name is Guido Falcone. What's yours? Rosie, Rosie Jones. Pleased to meet you, Rosie. You go all the way? I beg your pardon, Mr. I mean, Pro you travel all the way to San Francisco? Uh, yes. And uh, why are you... Look, what is this? 20 questions? My name is Rosie Jones. I'm 28 years old. I just got fired from my job because my boss is more interested in my figure than my future. I'm on my way to San Francisco because I once had a good time there and I thought it'd be a good place to start anew. I'm taking the train because I have a fear of flying. Now, if that satisfies your curiosity, I'll be on my way. Yes, uh, will you have dinner with me? No. Hey, remember me? I had to give that conductor a hundred bucks to let me go. Look at my shirt. Look what you friend did to my shirt. That's one of my favorite shirts, too. And he hit me. And he hits pretty good for guys who's training on nothing but spaghetti. How'd it go with you? Fine. Yeah. You don't sound so fine. Look, Bernie, I don't mind trying to get something from a guy that's trying to get something from me. But I don't like hustling a nice guy. Well, you picked a hell of a time to get a conscience. I mean, you could have told me this before I put my ass in hock. Rosie, everything I own is an escape, everything. I have a lot at stake, too. Look, Rosie. Look, I just don't want you to get sucked into something. You understand? When this guy gets his big in, he's going to be just the same as the rest of the rich snobs. Right? Huh? Right. Shall I call Cutler? Tell him to get our bonus ready. That's my girl. A 22-page book, What Every Girl Needs, complete with one illustration. You can get that for $11.95. Mind if I'm a seat? Free country, Mr. Delia. Unless you're planning on buying it. I don't understand why you're still mad at me. I'm not mad at you. It's just that you men with money treat all us working girls like something you can buy. I'm not used to having money. You'll get used to it. <laughs> I'm sorry for talking to you like this. You probably even deserve the money. I wonder why. Oh, let me take care of that. Hi, Mr. Falcone. I'm Earl Mitchell. How do you do? I'm staff aide to Colonel Winkle. Uh, he'd be very, very honored to have you and the uh, lovely lady as his guests at his table. I don't see how meeting an Italian millionaire is your amount of crock of crap. Billionaire, Colonel. As of 12 o'clock next Monday morning, he becomes a billionaire. Oh, okay. Now, that's a lot of potential matching funds. Golden eggs and a silver bucket. Let that dick old can't even vote. Colonel, just please try to smile when you meet him and be uh, nice to him as you give can. Give me a drink or something. Oh, Colonel. Colonel, may I present yeah. Miss Rosalind Jones, Mr. Guido Falcone, also known as Mr. Billion. How do you do? Uh, U.S. Army Colonel Clayton T. Winkle. Sit down, young'un. 
Uh, let me get right to the point. Is that a cocktail you drink? It's the head of a large company. You're going to need to drink. I'm quiet. The what? Alcoholic and vibing you doing? Jack Daniel. He knows how to gossip. Jack Daniel. He's a cousin of mine. Did I? You're very gracious. Salute. You need them, and Ray makes an enormous amount of difference, right? Absolutely. God, that's good. Colonel, what do you think you're doing, young lady, getting that man a drink? Who do you think you are, his mother? Oh, well, very, very good friends. I've had him on the wagon for two weeks now. You dumb bitch. What did you call the lady? Oh, nothing, nothing, Mr. Falcone. It was just uh, an affectionate American idiom, you know. <laughs> Horse. He called her a bitch, son. Same as in son of a bitch. Oh, yeah? Boom! <laughs> <laughs> that little incident paved the way for me to meet the founding father of the FBI. J. Edgar Hoover. And John Edgar Hoover said to me, he said, Bull, he said, you must be taking a lot of flack on slaughtering all them reds. But, Bull, you mark my word, that little old shootout's gonna catapult you right into the United States Senate with all that booze and them broads and them secretaries bedded down. You know what he did for me? He gave me these. These are his own personal bracelets. Same one he put on little Caesar. So it's my honor to uh, make you two kids honorary members of the Bureau. Raise your arms up here. Put that on that son. That's it here, daughter. That's good. And this is for duty far and above the call of duty. Mr. Guido Falcone. Yes, that's me. FBI. Would you come with me? He's not FBI. Want to take a ride? Welcome aboard. This has turned out to be a hell of a circus, hasn't it? Well, I told you, I told you, the man is an animal. He practically hit me. Now, we have got to release some kind of statement. Now, John, I'm warning you, if we allow this man shenanigans to keep making us look ridiculous, I cannot be responsible for public opinion. Marge, please, no phone calls. But it's the FBI, Mr. Cutler. Hello, John Cutler here. Now listen and listen good, because I'm only going to say this once. I'm holding Guido Falcone. In tomorrow morning's mail, you will receive his passport and instructions as to where and when you will deliver $1 million for his life. If you don't do exactly as the letter directs, Guido Falcone will die. If you call the police, if you call anyone, Guido Falcone dies. Do we understand each other? We understand each other perfectly. There'll be absolutely no trouble. Nice talking to you, Mr. Cutler. Thank you. What was that all about? We are in terrible trouble. What's he done now? Guido has been kidnapped. Oh, my God. Should I call the press now? Of course call the press, and call the police, too. John Cutler and the Falcon Finance Company will not hold still for something like this. Yes, sir, Mr. Cutler. All right, hi, come on. Oh, Moose, uh, open me a bottle of Dom Perignon. 69? No, this calls to 62. Mr. Billion, Guido Falcone was kidnapped off a train late Thursday night. The abduction was revealed to the press by John Cutler of the Falcone Finance Company. 
Cutler claimed the abductors were asking $1 million for Falcone's release. Big trouble now. There it is. What are you talking about? Read the newspaper. It's on the front page. I'm reading the newspaper. My family reads the newspaper. I don't care about your family. I mean, you know, we're going back to the slammer. Hey, man, I've been there, huh? I've been to the slammer. I used to walk the streets of New York. I used to walk the streets of Chicago. I used to get a cat's throat just like that for a penny. You understand? I mean, just take it easy, man, huh? Everything's going to be all right. Take it easy, Don't worry about it. Everybody pats the net. Hey, I'm just back to the slammer. Good morning. I mean, you know, we're going back to the slammer. Hey, man, Yeah, you read the papers? Yes, I read the papers. Now listen, we're gonna deliver a message. I want you to take the girl, slit her throat, put her in a pine box, and send her to John Cutler in San Francisco. Get it? Got it. Good. What's up? The girl. We gotta kill her. Oh, no, man. No, I don't do that. What do you mean? No. She's a woman. Huh? You don't order the key down. My mother's a woman. I'm down for dangerous sleep. I'll take her. Italian billionaire. We did kidnap her. We need a fraud cop. Look, look, I, I don't, don't care. care. Would you listen? I'm not killing the fraud. All right. I'm not killing the fraud. If you don't want to do it, I'm not killing the fraud. I'll do it. What a couple of turkeys. What's the matter, lady? You got a problem? You got a billion dollar baby here, right in front of your noses, and you can't even smell it. How much is your boss paying you? It's $10,000. Will you shut up? Ten thousand? Aren't you tired of baking the pie and not getting a piece? Pie? What are you talking about? Five hundred thousand dollars. You're holding all the coffers. You've got Mr. Billion. When your boss wants them, make him pay. The boss ain't gonna like that. Come here. Look at here. The broad is right, you understand? So, I mean, I dig where she's coming from. I mean, look here, look here, I got a plan. Now listen, I mean, we got to do it. We stuff him in the back, right? I right. get on the phone, I call up the man. Yeah. Instead of us settling for the little old 10, yeah. when we could have the whole big thing. Yeah. Well, what's here? Unlock him. I got him. I know I got him.
didn't do nothing. This guy's a maniac. He's a Saint Sixty Superfly. <laughs> viewers at home would be interested in knowing whether you plan to provide an extended deadline so that Guido can receive his inheritance. Unfortunately, the language of the will is very clear. So in other words, you're saying that if he isn't at the Embarcadero meeting by Monday, noon, he loses his money. Well, I didn't write the will. I'm just the executor carrying out Anthony Falcon's wishes. This must place a rather heavy burden on you with your stand on kidnapping because it could cost his life. I'm well aware of that. And I'm sure Guido would want me to do exactly as I'm doing. I hope I'm not interrupting, but shall we take a walk?
Goodbye, ma'am. Goodbye. Ma'am, I sure like that name. Clementine. That cowboy? Did you lose your horse? What? You look real lonesome. I guess so. You want to sit down? I sure do. I'm feeling a little lonesome myself. You're not from around here. Me? I'm a cowboy looking for work, man. Oh, yeah, well, things are tough all over, sugar. You want to buy a thirsty lady a little drink? Name your poison, ma'am. <laughs> well, I'm kind of partial to whiskey myself. What are you having? Jack Daniels. <laughs> all right. Hey, that's my favorite. Sam, Jack Daniels. There's no reason to look so down, man. Life's a banquet. Most poor suckers are starving to death. That'll be two bucks, Bill. Cheers. Salute. <laughs> Say, cowboy, you're all right. <laughs> you're all right, too. <laughs> Sam, more whiskey, please. Just uh, leave the bottle on the table, Sam. Over my teeth, over my gums. Look out, tubby, here she comes. Uh, say, baby, you want a party? Where's the party? You're looking at it. <laughs> Money. You want money. Fix you one of my special hangover removers. Matter of fact, I can use one myself. You're a cowboy? Oh, yeah. A damn good one, too. <laughs> That's one of my special hats. I remember the night I got that back in 1937. I was feeling real spiffy. And I'd go to this redneck bar and go right up to the bar and order myself a double shot. And then this big Texan, he comes up to me and he says, Nana? If you can drink as big as you talk, I give you my hat. So they lined up whiskey from one end of the bar to the other. Must have been about 30 that feet damn, of whiskey Pops, out there. you here telling that same old dumb story other, again? A shot at a time. And me and this old Texan, we started going to each other. Hey, Pops, but who's this? Oh, that's a, uh, uh, You mean uh, to tell me you brought him in here and you don't even know what his name is? 
I wasn't a damn name anyhow. Oh, Look damn. at you, Pops. One week you Dallas Red, then you Franklin X, now you Mohammed something. My like... name is Amid Rashid. That's what I said. I'm sorry, I don't want to cause any trouble. My name is Guido Falcone. Oh, you're Puerto Rican? See, he's one of them third world nationalists, just like you. Hey, what did you get there? Oh, I, I got it from the colonel. You telling me that they're giving handcuffs with the chicken now? I met this colonel on a train. Hey, look, man, don't you get smart with me. Nah, take it easy, Connell. We can take it easy. I mean, this man is hot, Pops. And you just got to get him out of here before he brings the heat down here on us. Hey, wait a minute. Hey. Thanks. Can I pay you something for the hat and your kindness? Oh, it wouldn't be kindness if I took any money for it. Don't worry. I'll be repaid many times over. Will you just get back in the house, Santa Claus? <laughs> well, you think we're running here. Salvation Army, if you want to give something away, why don't you give it to me? Went to the next bus out of here. There's one to New Orleans. Leaves about an hour. That's okay. It'll be uh, 1640 one way. None of your business. Oh, well, I'm a mason. It's my business. You can't talk that way to Linda. It's Lucy. Lucy, yeah, you can't talk that way to Lucy. And you're gonna stop me? Look, just cause I'm twice your age, sonny boy, ain't no reason I can't stomp a mud hole in your ass. That'll be the best. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. Get a minute. I want to talk to you. 
All right, who started this? All right, Sherlock, what's this all about? Keep in trouble. Who's in trouble? Guido. Cutler would do anything to stop him. Did you find out where Cutler is? Cutler is at home. Did you get the address? 933 Jefferson View Drive. Good. Where did you get the bracelet? It's a long story. Do you have your keys? Yeah, I got my keys. Oh, I know I put a copy of that agreement somewhere. Here it is. Do you have a pen? Pen, pen. Keys, pen. Yeah, here's a pen. Good. Rosie, what the hell is this all about? I mean, the last time I saw you, you had Guido eating out of your hand and our bonus locked up. I go to call Cutler, I come back and I find Dashiell and some drunken general in each other's arms. You're gone. And then I read that the turkey got kidnapped. He's not a turkey. Stuck on this Guido guy? Just under the handcuffs, would you please? Oh, boy. I'm sorry, Bernie. It's all my fault. Yes, yeah, sure, Rosie. It's all your fault. Old man Falcon dies, leaves Guido a billion dollars. Some guy hires us for a job, another guy kidnaps him. But it's all your fault. What the hell are you doing there? If Cutler gets the agreement with Guido's signature on him, maybe he'll leave Guido alone. Rosie, this is crazy. Guido ain't signing it. You are. How's it look? Guido, I pray it's you. Sunday morning coming down. <sighs> Name is Dwayne. What's your handle, son? Guido. Gino. Hell, I'm just going to call you Jerry. Well, Jerry, I sure am sorry that I got you into this mess. But like I always said, ain't nothing like a good woman or a good fight or a good drunk to perk a fella up by golly when he's feeling blue. You lost your woman? Oh, hell no, I lost my ranch. Goddamn bank come in yesterday and took it away from me. 28 years of hard work, all shot to hell. Now they're going to take my place and make a friggin' golf course or something out of it just because I couldn't pay their goddamn 18% interest. Oh, pipe down. Oh, pipe down yourself, you goddamn heathen. You know, this is still a free country even if we are in the Calaboose. Hey, Jerry, what do you do to make ends meet? I used to be a mechanic in a garage, a sports car. They laid you off, huh? Them goddamn greedy bastards. They're always happy to let you go when things is down, but they never want to share the profit when things is a booming. Maybe that's the way the world is. Hey, son. Somebody sure took the wind out of your sails. What's her name? Hey, deputy. What's your problem, fella? Tell him you got the right to make one phone call. Phone call? You sure you don't want to tell me how you got them handcuffs on you? I'd just like to make a phone call. I'll tell you what. If you'll tell me who put them handcuffs on you, I'll take them off. I got the right to one phone call. Yeah, that's your right. Tell the operator what you want, but keep it short, huh?
no matter how I've hurt you, the only thing that matters now is that you get to San Francisco and get the money. There's so much good you can do with it. And darling, don't worry about Cutler. I'll fix everything. I don't know if we'll ever have a chance together. And I don't know if it still means anything to you. But Guido, I love you. Sheriff, I'm Mr. Billion. Mr. Billion? That's right. If I get to San Francisco by noon tomorrow, I get a billion dollars. Let me out now and, and I can pay whatever you want. Uh-huh. Let's say I believe you and uh, let you go. How do I know you'll come back and pay me? You got my word. Yeah. Listen, mister, the only thing I believe in is cash money on the barrel head. So I see that, you stay put. Put it back, Hank. Look at the newspapers, Sheriff. I'm not lying. I'm Mr. Billion. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Miss Jones, I can't tell you how delighted I am to have this. But what is more important, I'm elated to see that you're safe and sound. We're all very apprehensive. Thank you, Inez. And, um... Guido, is he in good health? He's fine. Where would Guido be about now? Where's my bonus? I'll have a check drawn up for you immediately. Would you mind waiting in the other room? Take it easy, Jerry. We'll be out of here in a day or two. No, we're getting out of here now. All I said was that you had cow pie for brains and chicken manure for guts. Yeah. Help! You eat your Help! Eat them so what the hell? Get out of Get those handcuffs off! Damn handcuffs! Oh. Your car, yes. your car, well, in the pocket. Hey, what kind of car? What kind Lock of car? One, Ford Mach One. Get in your face, you are. Get it, bastard! Coming at you! 
We'll put them in a fire. for what God and man can do to a piece of property. But you ought to see this damn place where God had it all to himself. I just got to leave my eyes on her one more time. Oh, no. 25 goddamn years. Look. Oh. Oh. God's look Oh, hell. What the hell did they be with another goddamn golf course for anyhow? Them sons of bitches. Dwayne? Let's go and get your house back. Just dump me up, Jerry, and let me do the talk. Anybody? 
me home? Yes? Who's there? Excuse me, ma'am. Sorry to come a-barging in on you like this, but me and my boy here had a little problem with a car down the road. Too bad. My goodness, something sure do smell good. Apple pie. Apple pie. My favorite. Mind if I sit down here, ma'am? My feet are sure killing me. Apple ma pie, you say. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. May I use your telephone, please? This is Guido. I want you to know that I don't care how we met or why we met. The only thing I care about is that we met. I'll be there tomorrow. Rosie? Forget about me. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them! Hello, Guido, pal. Well, as you heard, we have Rosie. <laughs> Gotta make a decision. It's our life for the money. Well, now, don't don't rush. Take your time. <laughs> and call me back. Heard me so tall, but however, I think I'll have mine on the next slide. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> oh, man. Mmm, oh. mm, is that good? I'm so glad you like it. I do live here all alone, ma'am. Yes, now I do. I'm a widow. My children have their own homes. They visit and... Hello. I'm coming for the money. I don't think you understand, Guido. I'm not bluffing. Neither am I. How do I know you won't kill her anyway? I'll see you in the morning. Guido. Yes? What do you propose? Listen. If I have Rosie safe before 12 noon tomorrow, you can keep the money. Think it over. Call me back. 817-375-4123. Write this down. 817-375-4123. Check that area code, 817. Young man, why are you wearing such a long face? You know, my eldest always says when he's feeling blue, Mama, there's nothing that cheers me up like your good home cooking. Now, why don't you have a, a nice piece of pie? Thank you. Looks very delicious. I'm not hungry right now. Thank you. The boy, uh, he's in love. You'll have excuse him, ma'am. Hello? Hello, Mona? Mona? Honey? Excuse me. Hello? Yeah. What? Erica? I beg your pardon. Oh, would you please hang up? Erica, I'm going to have you hang up. Now, you see, there's a gentleman here, and I. Uh, you know, I've always wanted to say. Hello? Uh, who were you talking to, pal? What did you decide? And how's the weather in Texas? Very smart. Get to it. I accept your proposal on two conditions. First, you pick her up somewhere at a distance from San Francisco. Where? The Grand Canyon. Pick her up at Shoshone Point. Second, pick her up at exactly 12 noon. If you hurry, you might make it. How do I know she would be there? You don't. But how do I know you won't come straight to San Francisco? You don't. Ma'am? Yes? You have a car? Yes, I do, but... I gotta have it. My car? I promise, ma'am. I promise to repay you many times over. Why don't you give us the keys, ma'am? I can assure you that my boy's word is good. I do believe that's the worst goddamn pie ever eaten in my life.
Stacy. It's a long way down, isn't it? It'll probably take them weeks to find our bodies and months to put the pieces together. And even then, they might not get a positive identification. So really, you and Mr. Cutler have nothing to worry about. Actually, Mr. Cutler doesn't have anything to worry about anyway. He's not even here. He's not gonna push somebody into the canyon. He's not gonna commit murder. He's hundreds of miles away, becoming one of the most powerful, important men in the United States. I just don't understand. What's in it for you? It seems to me that you have everything to lose and nothing to gain. Hey, take a left here, Jerry. You know, I always did want to see the Grand Canyon. Lived in the United States all my life, and it's the first time I've ever been here. Of course, I ain't never seen the Statue of Liberty, neither. I saw it. Been down to see the Alamo a couple of times. I believe they got a law in Texas. You gotta go see it. <laughs> Don't worry, Jerry. Everything's gonna be all right.
to the news at 12 noon on this, the 12th day of April. Datelines today, Plains, Georgia, Trenton, New Jersey, and Beirut, Lebanon. But first, a word from your local stations. Hi, fans. This is Lefty Pryor with a reminder. You won't want to miss tonight's game. The Yanks take on the Orioles on Monday night, Game of the Week. Be sure to tune in tonight at 8.30 Pacific Time or 9.30 Mountain Time. Don't miss it. Over most of these UBS stations. Hey! Hey! Georgia, I don't mean to be interrupting you two lovebirds, but we better haul ass if we're going to collect that billion dollars. To mean that what do you mean? Here in the United States, we're divided into four time zones. It's like four Italys laying side by side. Wait, oh, it's right. It's 2 o'clock in New York, it's 1 o'clock in Chicago, it's 12 o'clock here, and it's 11 o'clock in San Francisco, and the airport's that direction. Let me try. I'm just a pilot. He's the boss. Hey, you Mr. Lacey, Mr. Lacey. I know you're brother man and you think you're Mr. Lacey. There are people I have to repay. Okay. Okay, you got it. Jim, you fly these people to San Francisco. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce one of San Francisco's leading citizens, one of the truly fine legal minds in America, and some kind of a human being. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. High Kitchmiller. Thank you. It is my pleasure to introduce a man whose integrity is exceeded only by his generosity, whose intellect is exceeded only by his compassion. San Francisco Tower, this is Citation 290, Charlie Charlie, 15 miles east, request line instructions. Roger, 290, Charlie Charlie, use runway 180 west, clear to land in 1200 hours. His sense of leadership is exceeded only by his gift of friendship, by his generosity, whose intellect is exceeded only... Don't make me look too good, I don't want to think I spend all my time in the golf course. Where's the parachute? It's in the back. Fly me over to Embarcadero Center. Mr. John Wellington Cutler. Hey. Okay. See you in the fall, partner. I love you, Rosie. I love you, Guido. High noon. I would like to apologize. I know that smoking is a filthy and disgusting habit, but every man is allowed one vice, and this is my one vice. I would like to begin by admonishing those who would advocate a relaxation of the criteria for loans and mortgages. Only by keeping a tight rein on the river of money that flows through our economy will we prevent the floods of inflation and the drought of recession. I say that this is a time not to loosen your belt, but to tighten.
Are we paid? Many times over. In the free marketplace, only the strong and deserving survive. Hey, which way can we back the barrel scanner? That way. Hey. Good hard work is always rewarded. And malingering is punished. But in reality, you see only the destruction of a system to which they can't adapt. If I may have a personal moment at this time, I would like to be allowed to say something that I believe to be appropriate at this time. I am deeply saddened by the loss of that fine young man whom I grew to have such great affection for, Mr. Guido Falcon. Marcadero Center? 25 cents, one quarter of a dollar. Hey, you're Mr. Billion. Hey, Billion. he's got a billion dollars. Look at that. That's Mr. Billion. Billion. If all had gone well, he was to be here with us today for this little celebration. And I think that this is the time to pay back. He was not a child. He knew that he was too young and too naive to take over the of such a vast thing was his ambition to become a banker. Mr. Bidjan. this meeting of the board of directors of this here bank. Now, the first order of business is the matter of that damn 18% interest that's too much for a man to pay. Now, we got to get rid of it. The only thing to do is to hold a vote on it. Now, ma'am, what's your feelings on this? That sounds to me like a most sensible notion. It's far too much for folks to pay. And as the only woman member of this board, I happily cast my vote with you, Mr. Hawkins. Thank you, ma'am. Bernie? Dwayne, I've given this matter a lot of thought. I think we ought to buy Vegas. What the hell good is it going to do to buy Vegas? And about that percentage bit, I don't know nothing about no percentage. I say give the money to the poor folks. That's what you need to do. Oh, no, We're going to do some... Look, that's, that's charity. That's patronizing. Now, people need control over their own lives. We should set up daycare centers, skill centers. I mean, I agree with the lady there. And we should have some more sisters on this board. Mm, I agree with Cornell on that. You see, what we need is an effective program for the working man and woman. Now, that's the heart of the matter right there. Leo? I vote with the majority. That's the American way. It's been working for 200 years. Bull manure, Lacey. 
I make a motion that this bank never allows any of its money to get into political entanglements. And I'm gonna drink to that. Jerry, what's your feeling on this matter? Well, I'll leave it up to you, partners. 